cutting edge GPUs, they are cutting the edge. Greetings one and all and welcome to another Deckard Games modern GPU thing. Today we have the uh, ASUS Rogue Strix Gaming. It's the RTX 4080 from um, NVIDIA and it comes on this um, freaking giant and uh, heavy box. At the front we have the card itself and some uh, embossed uh, artwork by uh, ASUS featuring their uh, Rogue Strix Gaming series of uh, hardware. We also have uh, the info that, uh, well, it has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory. Also, uh, it is compatible with, uh, of course, the Aorus Sync software, GPU Tweak 3, and uh, of course, you have uh, some uh, DLSS ray tracing, reflex, and the uh, NVIDIA Studio kind of thing. So, uh, sure. Looking at the back of the box, we have um, a lot of uh, publicity info featuring the um, design of the card because, well, it is a card which has some design. It also features the uh, Axial Tech fans, which provide 20% more airflow through the heatsink. Sure, some uh, power delivery info, software, and whatnot. Some key features that we already talked about ray tracing, the LSS, and whatnot. It has uh, DisplayPort 1.4a and HDMI 2.1a. We will get into that in a moment. And, uh, well, this is uh, it and uh, the obvious and usual stuff by uh, ASUS. Cutting edge GPUs. They are cutting the edge. AI accelerated, realistic and immersive graphics. Sure, game winning responsiveness. You can only win games with cards like this and whatnot. Ah! It is uh, big, that's what, it's, that's what it matters, so yeah, let's open this thing, because, well, it is sealed. There you go. As I was saying, as usual, inside the uh, outer box, we have an inner box, which is black, with some uh, engraved uh, things on it, the Rogue Streaks logo, and uh, opening the... Uh, Inner box reveals a monstrous card. Oh my god. <laughs> sure. Let's just uh, remove this to the side. Yeah. Holy crap. That's so freaking heavy, sir. Uh, do we have more stuff? I believe we do. We have uh, an Isus thingy, which I believe will be the uh, usual. They have a collector's card and whatnot. So yeah, you have the uh, folding thing, if you want to do some um, homework. You have the collector's card, I don't really know uh, what this is for, but sure. Warranty! How to use your uh, graphics card holder. Sure, uh, well, this, this crap needs four PCIe connectors to connect to the adapter. And a quick start guide. Going even deeper, we have the um, PCI adapter. Oh, it's three. I was thinking it, it would be four, but no. Three, sure. The uh, iPower adapter, we have a um, Velcro tie. And uh, our GPU stand, which you just uh, unscrew this. You have this um, ruler kind of thing. Huh, it is a screwdriver. I didn't know that. That's cool. You can't make a lot of use of it, but uh, sure. Nonetheless, it is a screwdriver. Look at this nice uh, little detail. You have your uh, Philips screwdriver in there. You have a ruler in here. Don't really know uh, why. And you have this uh, thing where you put the other thing. And you can use it. Well, it got stuck. You can use it, I believe it goes, yeah, it has this groove over here, and this groove goes to the screw. Sure, you, let's say you need this height, you just screw it back in there, and look at that. You have a uh, GPU uh, stand to prevent some sagging, which is nice, again, it's just a simple thing. And uh, even the Velcro tie, but especially this, when you pay this uh, stupid amount of money for a uh, GPU, 
Ah, come on, guys, at least give us something. Just something more. And uh, there you go. A uh, very nice GPU stand. Well, and here we have our massive GPU with uh, three um, giant fans. It has the uh, ROG colors in there. So, uh, sure. Here we have the uh, GeForce RTX logo. From my previous experience, this won't be RGB, but the Republic of Gamers will. Also, these things around here. So, uh, yeah, there you have your uh, high power connector thingy. The backplate, again, GeForce RTX logo. And uh, some uh, ROG stuff. Some uh, GPS coordinates that you can uh, put. On Google, I'm not gonna bother with that. We have a switch for performance mode to the left and quiet mode to the right. There you go, that uh, little switch. The back of the card, a pretty dense fin stack. Again, the top of the card. And on the other end, we have this uh, massive plastic thing that almost looks like a, a radiator or something. You have uh, two HDMI and three display ports. And uh, well, that's pretty much it. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think that we should uh, peel this thing and uh, put it into work and look at some numbers, some uh, frames per second, thermals and uh, whatnot. So uh, yeah, let's put this monster which is super heavy, into work. Holy crap, we have a double peel! Look at that! I removed this thing, and we have another. <laughs> sure, you can never have too much peel, uh, I guess. As usual, we are going to take a look at the series of games in three resolutions, 1080p, 1440p and 4K. Green graphs mean, of course, NVIDIA GPUs, red ones are AMD, and you gotta look for the blue graph, which uh, is the GPU that we are testing in this video. And so let us start with Borderlands 3 1080p Ultra Settings, the uh, RTX 4080 gets an average of 227 frames per second, and 96 1% lows. Moving up to 1440p, the RTX 4080 gets an average of 177 and 46 1% lows. Scaling to 4K, the RTX 4080 drops the average to 99 frames per second and 84 1% lows. Next game is Control 1080p Ultra Settings, the RTX 4080 gets uh, an average of uh, 239 frames per second, the exact same number as the RTX 4070 Ti. Moving control to 1440p, average frames per second 169 and uh, 130 1% lows. Moving up again to 4K, the RTX 4080 gets an average of uh, 84 frames per second and 71% lows. The next game on the list is Cyberpunk 2077 1080p, the RTX 4080 gets an average of 182 frames per second. Moving up to 1440p, average frames per second are 137 and 85 1% lows. Scaling Cyberpunk to 4K, the RTX 4080 gets an average of 69 frames per second and 53 1% lows. Next up we have Death Stranding, 1080p, very high, the RTX 4080 gets an average of 221 frames per second and 182 1% lows. Scaling to 1440p, we have 215 frames per second on average and 182 1% lows. Going up again to 4K, the RTX 4080 gets an average of 140 frames per second and 118 1% lows. Next game is Doom Eternal, which runs on uh, everything, and as you can see, the RTX 4080 gets an average of 610 frames per second, which is not playable, and uh, 404 1% lows. Scaling to 1440p, Doom Eternal gets uh, 493 
frames per second on average, and 315 1% lows. Going up again this time to 4K Doom Eternal on the RTX 4080, we get 283 frames per second on average and 196 1% lows. The next game on the list is GTA V 1080p, the only DirectX 11 game. We have an average of 188 frames per second, pretty much tied with the 4070 Ti. We are pretty much CPU bound on this game. Scaling GTA V to 1440p, we have an average of 187 frames per second. Again, we are CPU bound. And scaling again, this time to 4K, GTA V gets with the RTX 4080 an average of 190 frames per second. Next, we have Horizon Zero Dawn 1080p Ultimate Quality. The RTX 4080 gets an average of 207 frames per second and 121 1% lows. Moving to 1440p, the RTX 4080 gets an average of 195 frames per second and 125 1% lows. Moving up again to 4K, the RTX 4080 gets an average of 119 frames per second and 87 1% lows. Finally, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider 1080p, the RTX 4080 gets an average of 277 frames per second and 107 1% lows. Moving up to 1440p, the RTX 4080 gets an average of 251 frames per second and 106 1% lows. Scaling up to 4K, we have an average of 152 frames per second and 119 1% lows. Next, we have some ray tracing tests at 4K. We have Control with RTX off. The RTX 4080 gets an average of 84 frames per second with the RTX medium frames per second dropped to 71 and with RTX set to high frames per second drop again to around 50. Next ray tracing test is Cyberpunk 2077 again 4K with the RTX off. Cyberpunk gets an average of 69 frames per second, RTX low 64, RTX medium we have 56, RTX ultra around 55 and with RTX Psycho, the RTX 4080 gets an average of 51 frames per second. Final ray tracing game F1 2021 with RTX off we have an average of 238 frames per second and with RTX on frames per second drop to 148. This is not a very demanding game when it comes to ray tracing. We also have 3D Mark Time Spy, because uh, why not? At 1080p, test 1, we get 260 frames per second on average, and test 2, 228. Moving to 1440p, the average dropped to 187 on test 1, and 160 on test 2. And moving up again to 4K, we have an average of 93 frames per second on test 1, and 87 frames per second on test 2. Next chart is about thermals and the uh, all-round temperature of the card sets at a minimum of 25 degrees Celsius and at a maximum of 62. The GPU hotspot has a minimum of 34 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 66, which is the uh, normal temperature, let's call it that, when you are playing demanding games. As for VRAM, the numbers are pretty much the same as the all-round GPU temperature, with a minimum of 24 and a maximum of 62. The VRM temperature sets at a minimum of 28 and a maximum of 47. I was uh, pretty surprised with the uh, cooling capabilities of uh, the uh, ASUS uh, Strix RTX 4080. Finally, we have some power consumption associated with clock frequency, of course. The card idles at a minimum of 210 MHz and boosts up to 2820 MHz. And at this point, the GPU is pulling around 325 watts. While the fans idle at zero, of course, well, it has a fan stop mode when the card is idle and the fans reach a maximum of 1000 
299 RPMs. Well, and there you go, the Asus ROG Strix GeForce RTX 4080. It's a lot of name, they gotta stop with this uh, long name nonsense. A card which, as you can see, uh, well, it doesn't fit on my Lee and Lee uh, O11 Dynamic. Well, it just uh, won't uh, won't fit. So uh, if you went, if you have one of these, that's a uh, nope. I continue to say that um, this choice by uh, Nvidia of this uh, of this high power cable connector thingy is a uh, stupid thing. But sure, at least if you want to do that. Send us a cable with, I don't know, maybe 40 or 50 centimeters of length, so you don't end, with, uh, end up with all these things hanging over there. Let's get one thing out of the way first. This is an expensive card, 1600 euro dollars. It's an expensive GPU. This isn't a 1080p card, obviously. This is for those who want to go all out. And speaking of all out, why do I do ray tracing testing only at 4k well it's because of that because if you want to use ray tracing i believe in my opinion that you should be playing at 4k one should one could say that well i have a 1080p um, display and i want to use ray tracing which is a valid point to which i would counterpoint that well if you have a 1080p display this is not a card for you. You can get a card with, uh, I don't know, maybe 500, 600 bucks and play your games with uh, all your settings maxed out. And, uh, well, you just don't need to spend this amount of money. This is not a 1080p card. This is to go all out 4K ray tracing, which, again, in my opinion, ray tracing isn't quite there yet. But, uh, well, it is, it's beginning to reach that... Um, 60 frames per second barrier with all things maxed out but sure here's another video about uh, the rtx 4080 from uh, asus if you enjoy this one leave it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the channel because your support is always and very much appreciated check out the other videos that i have here on the on the same channel that you are watching i have the uh, 4070 ti and uh, other video cards, uh, new builds, old builds, new games, old games, whatever. Follow me on social media if you feel like it. No, uh, no biggie. If you feel like following me, sure. If not, um, sure. As always, thank you very much for watching this video that you just did. Until my next one, please do. As always, take care.